This is the Peugeot 408 plug-in hybrid. And for the last few months, I've been running it as my own car. And I like it a lot. I've got on with it. But one thing I haven't entirely got on with is the bit that's under there, the plug-in hybrid powertrain. And if you want to know why I haven't got on with it, then keep watching. Well, actually, let's start with the good bits. This car has a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine and it's teamed with one electric motor and a 12.4 kilowatt hour battery. And this combines to make 180 horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque. Together with an eight speed automatic transmission, it means the 408 is smooth, refined, and actually reasonably quick when there's charge in the battery. In fact, it feels at its best in full electric mode, which is why I reckon the upcoming EV version of the 408 should be excellent. But coming back to this plug-in hybrid version, and as soon as the battery runs down, the whole driving experience changes because you've suddenly gone from having a nice, pretty refined plug-in hybrid powertrain to one where you've got a 1.7 ton SUV that doesn't have the powertrain being used as it's supposed to be because you've completely run out of range and it's all down to the engine. And the engine on its own doesn't feel that convincing because it's pretty coarse, can be a bit clunky as well, and it's just not the best driving experience. Now, of course, that's not just the Peugeot 408. You get that with all plug-in hybrids. Of course you do. As soon as you take away the battery range, it's not functioning like it should. So you've got a driving experience which isn't as good. But what I have noticed with this, and it is worse than some other plug-in hybrids, is that the range, it's nowhere near where it should be and that means that you end up driving around without charging it more of the time. When I took delivery of this 408 in the latter part of 2023, the brochure said it should have an equivalent all-electric range of 40 miles. Now, however, the latest brochure for 2024 says it's only good for 34 miles and sadly, even then, that still feels very ambitious. So I charged this car last night and it's only showing 17 miles of range. And even on a good day, I'm never getting more than 21, maybe 22. And I just don't think that's good enough because claimed range is 32, 34 miles. So I wasn't expecting that, but then surely high 20s maybe, that would be reasonable, but unfortunately not. And because the car is so different to drive when it's not charged, you always want to keep it charged up. But then being an EV, you do have an issue with that because while I can uh, plug it in this end and use the correct end to do that, I'll often find that there's no chargers free because people have got there before me. So I end up with a car that isn't running as it's designed to, which is a shame. What this means is that I'm left driving the car around without charge more often than I really should. And this kind of defeats the point of the hybrid powertrain. Happily though, I have discovered a few ways to get the most out of the range. First things first, on longer journeys, make sure you program the sat-nav. And I mean the car's inbuilt sat-nav, not the one on your phone. Because if you program the sat-nav to your destination, the car will work out where it's best to use the electric power. So you don't just spend it all on the motorway. And I think that's a pretty good idea because I found that when I'm driving this car on the motorway at motorway speeds without any charge in it, the difference between that and driving it with charge on hybrid mode in terms of fuel economy, it's not actually that much. It's not as much as you'd expect. So you're definitely better off being very careful with how much electricity is being used at higher speeds and when the revs are quite level versus how much is being used in town because that in town is obviously where the electric motor does its best work and that's where you can really make the savings on fuel. Like I said earlier, this is where the 408 does its best work. If you're in the city and not exceeding 40 miles an hour, leave it in EV mode and watch as your fuel tank gauge never goes down, provided you keep the car topped up with electricity, of course. What I would say is that if you find yourself in between towns or you've got a journey which exceeds the maximum electric range of the vehicle, then definitely put it in hybrid mode. Don't try and use the EV range all at once because even if you haven't got the sat-nav set, the hybrid, it definitely extends the life 
of the battery range as you can imagine and it does a fairly good job at telling when is a good time to have the electric motor in use and when is a good time to just have the engine. The sat nav will do it better but the hybrid setting on its own does a reasonable job of it. Also be sure to use the charge hold feature which is in the infotainment system because with that way you can charge it or you can hold it to six miles or 12 miles or maximum electric range and that's particularly useful if you haven't got the sat nav set and say you're on the motorway and you've got only a few miles left and you want to save six miles of electric range for driving around in town at the end of your journey because that's when it makes the biggest difference so that setting is really useful my only complaint with it is that you can only hold it to increments of 6 12 or max i wish you could just set it so that it doesn't matter which charge level you're at you can just hold it there because otherwise it's a little bit inflexible and I can't really see why it needs to be like that. And actually the max range hold function is pretty much useless because if you put it on and the car isn't at max range then what it's going to try and do is top the battery up to that level using the car's engine and that is one way of absolutely sapping the fuel economy it's just not worth using you're completely defeating the point even if you think oh i've got a little bit of town driving at the end i'll use more fuel now to get myself some range yeah honestly i don't think it's worth it just try and maximize it using the hybrid function using the regular holes or using the sat nav Overall then, I'm still learning to get the best out of the 408's hybrid powertrain, but I'm still not entirely sold. That said, as we move into the warmer months of the year, that should produce more range, and hopefully I'll see the very best that this powertrain can deliver. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to the Parker's channel and turn your notifications on, and if you have a 408 and you want to let us know what it's like, or you have any questions, please leave a comment below.